What's up, guys? We are back. DNW. I'm a gamer and commentator, Patrick Griffin. And today, we are going to be playing. Gauntlet, it is going to be played on the GameCube, and it is a adaptation of the 64, which is in itself an adaptation of the arcade game. Pretty great game if you've never played, probably one of the only ones that involves like RPG leveling up that I actually play, otherwise you won't normally see me play these types. You can choose your character, much like D&D. &D. Um, you got the Jester, Sorceress, Knight, Dwarf, Archer, Wizard, Valkyrie, Warrior. And these are all unlockable characters, which I will possibly drink for in the future. Each one has their stats, strength, speed, armor, magic. His is highlighted strength, because that's his highest. Eight characters, two per strength, or two per um, stat. The Dwarf and the Warrior are both Strength. The Archer and the Jester are both Speed. The Wizard and the Sorceress are both Magic. And the Valkyrie and the Knight are both Armor. We are going to be the Jester because that's usually my guy. You can choose your color. Blue, yellow, red, or green. Basically tells us this evil demon broke free and we got to send him back to where he came from by destroying all eight realms bosses and getting their shards which is kind of like a mirror shard kind of like a um stained glass window and then we will be the window will open up this little portal right here and it will go in there and destroy the last boss is how it's going to work right now i'm collecting these crystals you only need 15 to get to the first area which sumner set up for you this guy is Sumner right there. He's like our Raiden, our leader. So each realm is going to have a set of levels. You can only go to the next level once you beat the first level, the previous one, as well as the last level will be the boss. And the boss is who we need to destroy to continue on, basically. And the crystals are what we need to collect to open up the next area. Each area has its own different color of crystals as well. So this first area is the Forsaken Province, which is where the Sorceress hails from. And all you do is, each one attacks like this, each character, they all throw items. And what you're going to do is just play through the level. And Gauntlet is the most apt name because it's just an endless barrage of bad guys. This area, they're kind of zombie looking guys and they come from these generators, which are uh, like half tombstones. Use magic to kill enemies. You're gonna use magic to kill enemies. I really won't though. Actually, I probably will. I'll probably use it more than I will for death. There's a lot of items you grab and I'll probably end up going through all the items eventually throughout this game. There's fuckers like that that like to range attack pieces of shit. Those are the worst. My drinking rule is going to be simple every time I take damage from a trap. Now a trap is an inanimate object around here that uh, will attack you. Spikes or a flame like geyser or a swinging blade or something you have to kind of walk through. You'll notice and I'll show you as well as... Um, as well as I'll usually announce my drinks as I go through, just like normal. So you work your way through to another portal. The portal I went into this level is going to be another one to leave, and then it'll lead to the next level and just continue through. Keys will help you open chests and open doors that you need to, gates that you need to get through as well. The th giant attack I did earlier is like my special. Each character has a special as well. Most of them all... Um, 
attack and move the same way. As you see, once that goes away, the magic on the bottom, that bar, it's like a pink bar that's glowing. That means my turbo, which is that, my special attack is ready to be used. What the special attack does is just plow right through walls and shit. I picked up a turbo, which is an item that refills this, otherwise you'd have to wait kind of a time limit, but that turbo refilled my special so I can use it again rapidly. Otherwise it takes, I don't know, probably a minute worth of time, two minutes worth of time. This big guy, you can't really quite see him, but you're going to see plenty of him later. I'm just going to hit him from here so he, he can't hurt me. That's a general. He's just a bigger guy. You get more experience points from him. You get experience points from all the bad guys because we're going to be leveling up as I've already moved to level two. These are rune stones. Also what we need to continue the game because it's going to help us open up the portal into the underworld in which we will fight the last boss again because we end up doing, fighting him twice. Jester I choose for his speed not only because he moves fast, as you guys know from Banjo Tui, that I like to be able to move pretty quick, but he throws fast, and that's always a plus in any situation, especially in this game, because I might not be as strong as the warrior or the dwarf, but I can, for every, you know, five they throw, I throw six or seven. A lot faster. If you play as the knight, if you play as the warrior, you would notice a complete difference on how fast I can throw. And I like the fact that I can do that. So the items where that bar is that has my um, special, how it says levitate, and I just grabbed the phoenix. These are items you can use, upgrades to help you through the game. And like I said, once I get enough money, I'll show you which ones you can buy and what they look for. Um. But for now, we're just going to do bits and pieces, and I'll just show you each one and how they work. I use the Phoenix. It's a familiar that holds up behind you for a limited time. All these items are a limited time. The Phoenix is an extra shot, so now I shoot double for right now. Levitate's going to be my best friend, technically, because I can levitate over the traps and shit that hurt me, but... What's the fun in that? So we're just gonna turn that on as well. Resist Acid is also like a gas mask that I grabbed. Some of the bad guys are kamikaze guys that will sprint at you. And they will explode in your facha. And some of them have gas. You'll notice in, uh, in the fourth realm, there's a lot of gas that hurts you when you breathe it, just toxic gas, so good to have the resist acid part of it. I always want to make sure you can take out those fucking range guys. You can usually hear them scream once they're dead. Looks like levitate's the last thing I have on it because I can't even switch to other stuff. Which is okay. Special. Magic creates an AoE bubble for a little bit. And it helps kill bad guys as well as get rid of death. And deaths are around here that suck your life. But I'll probably, most likely, buy what's called a uh, anti-death. And I will use that to suck, do the reverse power. So this is a trap. And it looks like that when I hit one. And I'll take a drink for that. But I just kind of wanted to show you guys as well. Not too much here, but uh, certain areas will really mess you up. Super shot is literally what it is. As you see here, just a giant fucking arrow. You get five shots with that and then you're done. There's only a few limited items I like to actually hold on to or grab if I can. Um, I'll probably grab at least one of each thing just to kind of show you, but it's really not. A lot of stuff I really don't care to use. Those are exploding barrels. You want to shoot them from a distance, as Sumner is telling me. That's his voice explaining how certain things work. The generators you need to destroy because they will... It'll be infinite bad guys coming out until that generator is destroyed. So you need to destroy it otherwise. Um, 
Like I said, it will literally be non-stop. And in later levels, there will be times where they're coming out so fast and you can only kill so many at a time that you can literally just sit there forever and attack all the bad guys. But the generator will never be destroyed. This golden fang, you're going to need those to get into other areas of the main hub area, which after this level I'll kind of do a little walk around. We'll see where we're at, see how long it takes. I might be able to do two levels after I show you kind of where things are. A lot of those flashing things is usually like secret walls, hidden walls. I know where most of them are, so I'm not too worried about it. Really? There you go. If you get close, you turn into more of a melee attack instead of throwing stuff. You start punching and kicking naturally. I would. Every, like I said, every character throws like this. Um, they throw stuff. Warriors throw axes, you know. Sort of the wizard throws little, like, spell balls. But everyone has a ranged attack. That's your main attack. And then you have a bigger one, like this. You shoot it a little bit slower, but it does a little bit more damage. And then everyone has a special attack as well. All very similar, and then and yet, some of them are kind of specific. Strange. This is also a trap. These fire geysers, and they're probably going to hit me. Spikes on the ground is usually what gets you to, like the one I hit to show you guys. That one's usually going to fuck me up. I was thinking about doing it every time, those ranged guys, those archers and bomb throwers. But I, uh... I know it's going to be hard to keep track of that. These ones are somewhat okay, but they're also going to be hard. I'm probably going to have to recount quite a few. The bigger the generator, the bigger the bad guys. And I mean that as like, these are the biggest ones with these giant saw blades, because the generator is a full tombstone. But if I hit it once, it kind of breaks down, now you're getting smaller guys like that. And if I hit it again, it's going to break down even more. Now you're going to get even smaller guys, little pitchforks, until it's finally destroyed. So some of the ones, some of the generators will be already on the lowest level, and you just got to hit it a couple times. Some of them will be on the biggest level, and you got to really make sure you take it out, otherwise it's going to keep pumping out the biggest guys. And no one wants that. These are just switches, as you've seen me hit throughout this level so far. Lower bridges, open doors, helps you continue the game. These are scrolls that will tell you in case you miss shit. Um, but I've played this enough to know where mostly everything is. That's a turbo. The thing about this game though is if I've already used it, sometimes it it automatically uses it again, so you gotta be careful. This is one of those gen generals I was telling you about. He has the uh, skill to actually block a lot of shots too, so you want to bait him with a regular big attack like this, and then you want to hit him with your full-on special attack to really fuck him up, if you can. On my little stat board at the bottom, you got keys on the top left, you got potions on the top right. Potions are for this guy, Death, right here. Use it and it gets rid of him, otherwise he'll wake up if you get too close and then he'll kind of suck your life, suck life away from you, which is not cool. I always like to make sure I don't have any items on me. And we're done. Exit, first level, easy peasy. 14 minutes-ish. Um, usually what I plan on. Moon Jester has gained a level. So every time you gain a level, you gain a little bit of stats on all of them. Obviously my speed will still be the highest, pretty much. This is everything you can buy. You can buy life, you can buy keys, levitation that I told you about. That helps you get over uh, traps. Potions I used on that death at the end, but I'll probably save them for later too. 
growth just makes you large. You do more attacks. Again, most of these I'll probably pick up in the level, but I'm just going to give you a rundown. Fire amulet. All the amulets, electric, light, and acid just power up your shot for a little bit of time. Fire breath, lightning, and acid breath um, gives you like a little ranged attack. Super shot we used. Shields reflect. At least the reflect shield reflects a lot of the arrows and bombs that the bad guys throw. Electric and fire shields you can just use to run through bad guys without taking as much damage. Phoenix I used. Rapid fire is exactly what it means. Throw really fast. Hammers, I'll show you what they do. Um, that's going to be the most important weapon in this entire game. We'll be using that for every boss, pretty much. Three-way shot. Obviously, I shoot three at a time. Triple shot. Invisible, so they can't find me, the bad guys. Invulnerable, so they can't hurt me. X-ray glasses to look through chests and stuff, because sometimes chests have bombs in them. And I'll probably open one up to show you eventually gas mask we used anti-death i'm actually going to buy that because uh i'm going to use that for death anyway and then underneath there's a few more that i don't have enough money so i can't really show you and that is okay shows us our ending stats here i got one of those golden fangs there's also feathers and claws which we'll get in later levels as well as the crystals on the bottom if you see, we got 15 out of 15 on the top left one, which is the orange crystals to open the first area. Now, the first area has red crystals. We need 100 of those to open up the second area and so on and so forth, as we will do as well. We're going to save. I like to save periodically, not every time. Um... But definitely periodically, just because sometimes this game has a tendency to freeze. And I don't want that to happen. Congratulations, you have found a runestone. So I think this is Sumner like talking to us like telepathically, I guess, or his out-of-body experience. I don't know why he needs to be a ghost because he's literally right in front of us. So I got anti-death, something I'm probably gonna hold on to for the rest of the game. So over here, this gate, I need 12 of those snake fangs that you saw me grab one of. I need 12 of them to open up here, and it'll open up three more realms. Realms 3, 4, and 5, which we'll be going into. As well as on this east wing area, we'll need golden eagle feathers, which will be in realms 3, 4, and 5. This is your second realm, which is similar to the arcade once we get there, you'll recognize probably the first level if you ever played the arcade game. But we're going to go up and to the left first. Once we open up with the snake fangs, then we're going to go up and to the right when we get the feathers. Then we'll go down underneath to kind of finish up the last area. But this is going to be a long game. That's all easier said than done situation because I'm feeling probably 15, 16 parts. Make sure there's no secret wall. Oh, I laid him out. General. Hopefully he doesn't bounce it. Hopefully he doesn't sprint at me. So the bomb that just hit destroyed that little uh, cherry like this that the bad that the general gave me, which doesn't really mean much. I think it's only like 10 life. It's really not that useful, but it definitely blew it up. That speed, if I can get over there and grab it without it getting destroyed, but I'll probably end up destroying it. Those are hints and stuff, all those scrolls. Um, secrets and hints that help you find runestones slash treasure, or maybe gives you even helpful stuff like, hey, don't use all your keys, because there's secret areas that will um you'll need a key for. You know. My gold is at the bottom left, my life is at the bottom right. Ow. Fucker. Grab the speed. So now I run. 
even faster and throw even faster. Helpful for certain parts of this game. Right now, not crazy a lot, but helps for a little bit. You can hold up to nine keys and nine potions. Once you get past that, then you can't pick up anymore, so it's not always a bad idea to use some like that, especially if you're about to get ran ran the fuck over. Oh! Oh! So each area has the same similar type of bad guys. They don't look the same, but they're all similar in their ranking. You have ranged guys, you got big guys, you got what I call grubs, which are the tiny, just crawling on the ground fuckers, and here they actually are grubs. They're like little mealworm looking things. In other areas, they're different. Snakes and wolves and rats and other types like that, but they're all just like little ground crawlers. Anti-death we do not turn on because it's for only a limited amount of time. We're only going to turn it on to use against a death, then we'll turn it off, which is why once I get... I probably won't buy another one for the rest of the game because I get some in the levels and they usually last forever. They usually last a good, you know, two or three minutes, but I only use them for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, so... For every death I grab pretty much for every anti-death I grab can last me for two or three realms. I usually do a nice scream when I get hit by a trap, so it's usually what I look for when it comes to drinking for that. These grubs, these are what's crawling on the ground, and then their generators are on the ground, so I have to destroy it like that. It's like a little like nest. Some generators are up against walls, some are just right on the ground. It depends on the realm, the area. That is the sound of a, I was like a kamikaze guy, so just watch out when you hear them. Scream, that means you know someone's running at you. So we lowered this to grab this hammer. Thunder hammer is going to be used for bosses because for some strange reason... Um, you get kind of invincible when you use them, so the bosses can't really hurt you at all. So as long as I get a good supply of those, I can fuck them up without getting hurt. This might be a bomb. It is. It's like a weird voodoo coconut looking head thing, and it ticks, obviously, so you know you fucked up when you open one. What the hammer does is just like that. Uh, pretty much destroys everything in the screen as well as does a good amount of damage. So even if it's a general, it won't kill the general in one hit, but it will definitely force him to use his kind of block and then you can hit him with a special attack or something. We are going to come across a gargoyle in this level and that's where you mostly get those fangs, those golden snake fangs and the golden feathers and the golden Lion Claws, they're all from Gargoyles normally. These first few kind of just shows you what they look like, but, uh... Yes, that is what we're going to be... ...killing to get them. Oh, I still got my turbo. Like I said, when you use it and it goes away, sometimes it's like it doesn't register that you used it, or it registers you already used it, so when you pick up another one, then uh, it automatically uses it, or turns it on. You'll probably see that sometime in here too. It'll just automatically turn it on, which is fine. You just gotta be aware. I think that's either rapid fire or invisibility. I'm not sure, but we're probably not gonna come back for it because I'm not too worried about it. Some levers, when they're green, they're on. When they're red, they're off. But when you get on here, how it's kind of one leads to the other. So you know which one's working, which one's not working. So there's a death right here. We're gonna wake him up. He chases you. And he'll suck your life if he gets you. But I'm gonna turn this on and chase him. He's moving horribly slow. Usually I feel like they move a lot faster than that. You can go above your 
limited life when you do that with the deaths, so you can actually be extra life than normal, which is always kind of nice. Don't know what level I'm at. I think I'm five. Level five to know your max life. You just add um, four to it, and obviously multiply it by a hundred because you always start with level one, five hundred life. So if I'm level five, then I can hold up to nine hundred life again. See what I'm saying? Level ten, you can hold fourteen hundred life, and so on. We'll obviously get up to where we're in the thousands. Don't turn it bad. The bad gas can turn meat bad, and if you eat bad meat, then it takes away some life. These are also traps. This thing about to come on this railing. That. Something I can't really destroy, but it comes around the edge, and it'll run you over. Some of the ones you can destroy, but I still count them as traps in the sense of things that are moving. Um, take you out. Junk is... Considered gold, but it's only worth 10, which is pretty much useless. There are some golds that are in the hundreds, two or three hundred, and there's some that are um, 500 or so, too. So, obviously, we'll be trying to get as much as we can, do as much as we can. Now, other than generals, there's this big guy just woke up right there. He is a golem, as they call him. Um, even bigger. A lot more damage he will do to me. Like that. If you do a big one, he tries to block it like that, and then you can hit him with one of your specials. That's the mid-sized special. That's not the giant hammer that I normally throw. But that's okay. I'm still up on life from that death, so I'm pretty good right now. Certain things, like these, will have a series of levers to grab something good. So I need red crystals to get to the second world, but I need blue crystals to get to the third. I mean purple, to get to the third, and then blue, and then green, and so on. So that green crystal I just grabbed, I'm pretty sure it's bomb. Oh, it's not bomb. So the green one I just grabbed also counts as one out of like 175 that I need. So it's good to grab all the crystals as you can, when you can. Same with this purple one, that's going to be second world's crystals. But I want to grab some now so you have a good head start is what you're looking for. And later on, when we start getting into the white and the black crystals, you definitely want to grab as many of those as you can so you don't have to replay too many levels. There are some levels I will replay um, for advantage of getting more gold and more items and more crystals and more hammers and more pretty much certain levels I have that stuff able to get so you're going to want to replay them and I will and I'll explain to you guys obviously each time. So Gargoyle I'm gonna stop time so it's this guy right here, and he's a big one, just like the golem. He's a uh... oh, I'm getting hurt by that. So the fact that I can stop time really helps destroy this guy because same thing as the golem, except he has ranged attacks and he'll jump and claw and spit shit like that and like that. They all spew some sort of something, and then they'll shoot a ball of whatever they do too. That one specifically is like an acid. The um, the eagle ones that give you the feathers are electric, and then the lion ones that give you the lion claws are fire, basically. Anti-death and hammer are the two mainly ones that I keep on. Now in here, this is like a little bonus area. We're gonna come in here. And if I grab all the crystals within a certain time, 
grab coins before time runs out. Then, uh, I unlock a secret character in which, if you play this game again, you can choose to play as that character on the same saved file. Also a good thing to use when you're the Jester because he moves fast. Now what I will do is drink D10 if I fail one of these, which is probably two, maybe three that I am almost guaranteed to fail. I shouldn't fail this one. Now the character you unlock is going to be pretty much like a doppelganger style of one of these characters you could have been in the first place. And the realm decides who it is. You have unlocked a secret character. So I unlocked the Medusa, which is the sorceress's doppelganger, alter ego. Because this realm is the Forsaken Province, which is where the sorceress hails from. Each character hails from one of these realms that we are playing. And then we leave. And then we exit. One drink so far. Been, I've been trying to keep track. I'm pretty sure I haven't hit anything yet. Blue Jester has gained a level. Now I got more money. So any of these adds ten stat to uh, adds ten more to your stats, strength, speed, armor, and magic. So. If you did want to try to bulk up a certain specific spot, it costs a thousand, but you can do it. Mikey, you never want to get, you never want to buy, because you can't get rid of it, and it's horrible. Health Vampire is, if you have it on you, which we'll probably pick up throughout the game, and a bad guy hits you, it actually gives you a little bit of life instead of takes it away. Hand of Death, the opposite. If the bad guy hits you, it hurts them a little bit more, so you don't have to actually, like, physically attack them, they can just kind of kill themselves if they're behind you, like hitting you. And we're back to the anti-death, and then all the other items like that. I don't think I need to buy anything. We got three of the snake fangs, we got 74 of the red crystals. Now the red crystals, we got two more worlds, two more levels, and we're probably going to get all 100 next level, because they're very common, but after the red, they become less common for sure. So you want to I said, grab as many as you can, when you can. Ironically, even though I said I don't save every time, we're going to save this time because we're probably going to call it for part one. Did a lot of exposition. Give you guys some good background story of what we're doing. And then as certain things come up, I'll obviously explain it to you. But we'll leave it there finishing that and we'll be starting in the third level of this forsaken province in part two thanks for watching